long you've been off. I I was talking for a while there, and I, I don't know what happened. The camera just was not on. So, I'll start over. Uh, what I was saying was I, um, I put a little bit of pre-thought in, into this one, which I don't normally do. But the reason I did it was, you know, last week... I sat down in the car and I thought, oh, I'm going to talk about these uh, wax rag things, sandwich wrapper things. And what actually wound up coming out was that plus soda straws. And I really wasn't planning to talk about the whole soda straw thing, but I did. And you guys uh, responded to that. And because we're all thinking individuals that, you know, are using common sense, the vast majority of the comments were supportive. Well, I shouldn't say supportive. They were in agreement. Now, I did get a couple of comments. And actually, let me put it this way. 100% of the comments were in agreement. But I did get a couple of, of comments. And uh, somebody asked me on Instagram. And I even got an email about this. Saying, you know, I agree. But we do have a problem with, uh, with these plastic straws. What do you propose we do with them? You know, what, what's... What's the answer if the answer isn't banning them? What, what are we going to do? Is, is... So I decided to do a little bit of research on plastic straws. And, you know, as, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, well, and we do have bigger problems as well. So I looked up some numbers on that as well. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about these things. And I will put down below in the description um, all the links that I know of, that, you know, for the primary sources of this information or as close to the primary sources as I can I can find. Uh, look it up, read this stuff. Don't don't trust me. I'm I'm basing what I'm telling you on my own research, but go ahead and do your own research. So are soda straws a problem? And then the bigger question is are soda straws in the United States a problem? Let's let's take a step back even from that. Let's ask the question is plastic a problem in the ocean? And the answer to that is a unanimous yes. There is far too much plastic going into the ocean for it to be sustainable. There, the estimates are something like 8 million metric tons a year. Uh, you know, that's ridiculous. So clearly something has to be done about that. Okay. Where does the plastic come from? What are, what are the primary sources of the, of the plastic? Well, there have been a couple of studies and they all agree that most of the plastic is coming from Asia. Um, there are, it, it's interesting, most, most of the plastic actually gets into the ocean from rivers. And there are 10 rivers that have been identified as the top 10 offenders and eight of them are in Asia and the other two are in Africa. The United States and this is similar if you look at Europe and Canada and, you know. The United States contributes, I believe the number was 0.1% of the total plastic going into the ocean. And that's all plastic. You know, not, not just straws, but all plastic. So we, we, we're responsible for 0.1% of that total. So, of that 0.1%, how much is straws? Well, the number varies depending on what method you want to use. So, the guys that are trying to say this is a big problem, they're using a calculation based on the, the, the item. So, how many items are in the ocean? Now, the problem with that is that's saying that a soda straw is the same thing as a you know, 20-foot tarp or a 50 gallon drum, 50 gallon plastic drum. And it clearly isn't, but that's how this calculation is done. And if you want to go with that, then the soda straws make up 0.04% of the total plastic. If you want to use the more reasonable method where, you know, you're looking at weight, uh, so, you know, soda straws don't weigh very much, that drops to, I think it was like 0.002%. Relatively small percentage of the total plastic. Now, if you use that number along with the 0.1% number from earlier, you can calculate how much 
soda straws from the United States are contributing to the plastic problem. And when you do that, you find out that the answer is, if you want to go by per piece, the answer is 0.04%. So it's four one hundredths of a percentage point. Uh, if you want to go with the weight, which is almost certainly the, the better way to do this, the answer is 0.0002%. That's two ten thousandths of a percentage point. So if you had a magic wand and you could wave it and make all plastic straws disappear from the United States, keeping in mind that there's 8 million metric tons of plastic going into the ocean every year, you would have no effect. You would have absolutely no effect. Point, two ten thousandths of a percent of 8 million metric tons. When you take that away, Nobody's going to tell me that the answer is anything other than 8 million metric tons. You, it's too small of an amount to even consider. And I've talked so much, I let my cigar go out. That's bad. That's bad. I, I must really be rambling. So, what that means, guys, is that, you know, it... Let's take it a step further. If you could wave that same magic wand and make all plastic straws disappear from the entire planet, you would still have little to no effect. And if you could do it for all time, make it so that there has never been a plastic soda straw, you'd have a small effect because the total amount is 150 metric tons. Two ten thousandths of a percent of 150 metric tons is a lot, but what's left after you take that away is still pretty darn close to 150 metric tons. So the point is, the straws are a red herring. They're a feel-good item. And, uh, you know, if, if you go down that road, you're being kind of foolish. I hate it when I let a cigar go out. This is not not a happy cigar. Alright. We'll recover. Alright, so now that I've bored you with a bunch of numbers, so what I'm I'm pretty much trying to convince you is enjoy your soda straws. They're not the problem. But I also said there are bigger problems, and there are bigger problems, and that is something that I think people should know about and people should be trying to do something about. And I'm going to give you two examples, and again, I'm going to put links down below. You can, you can confirm all this to yourself. And these are both terrifying. So, in the next... 60 years, no, no, the next 50 years, the population will have grown to the point where there is no longer enough land available to raise livestock. In just 50 years' time. And according to a fairly reliable looking UN report, and I say reliable looking because it involves several academic centers, it wasn't just a government uh, or a UN initiative. The only option we will have in 50 years time is that we will have to start eating insects because that's going to be the only readily available source of food that can be cultivated on small enough plots of land that the population will still have a place to live. So in 50 years time, in some of your lifetimes, you're, you're not going to have any more steak, you're not going to have any more chicken, you're going to be eating bugs. You might like that, you know. And you might be one of these vegan people who think they can get all their protein from beans or whatever. And you know, the, yeah, you can. You can. That certainly is true. So maybe it's not as dire as all that, you know, maybe it's okay that we 
have to eat bugs because that'll force more people to eat beans and corn or whatever vegans eat. Um, but there's a problem there. Because the other study that I will link to below says that in 60 years time, there's not going to be any more topsoil on the planet. In just 60 years, we will have destroyed all available topsoil for growing crops. And the reasons for this are, are varied. You know, erosion is part of it, just natural processes, but also um, the farming practices, the chemicals that are being used in, in farming, uh, the, the methods that are being used to plow, and, and, you know, they're contributing to erosion. It's, uh, it's messy. And I'm here wondering if I'm going to get off across this train crossing before all heck breaks loose. It's, it's messy. Um, we're not treating farmlands very well, and this is a global problem. And it takes a really long time to make topsoil. It's, it's not something you can do overnight. So in 60 years, we will not be able to grow food. I don't know what the insects are going to eat, but we're going to eat the insects. This is, this is dire, and this isn't crazy, this isn't science fiction. There's some real good data suggesting that this is an accurate depiction of the next 50 to 60 years. When's the last time you saw a news story on this? When's the last time you saw a protester uh, uh, saying that, you know, we're not going to eat food that is irresponsibly farmed because we're worried about the topsoil? When's the last time you, you heard someone say that uh, <clears throat> we need to do something about global, and it's got to be global, population growth in order to protect land for agriculture? We just think that the food is going to magically be available. And, you know, we've got an exponentially growing population. It's crazy. So there's the real problems. And there's just two of them. You could probably come up with, with several more if you wanted to. So if you're really worried about the soda straws, the plastic straws, whatever you want to call them, I, I, I grew up calling things like Coke and Pepsi soda. My wife is from Pittsburgh and she calls them pop, which I think just sounds silly. But uh, she would probably call it a pop straw. If you want to, if, if you're really losing sleep over these plastic straws, and I know none of you are, forget it. Th that's not a big enough problem to even occupy a moment of your time. Enjoy the straws, they're not doing any harm. But there are things to keep you up at night. All right, guys, I've, I've gone on more than long enough. I hope you enjoyed that. Do check out the links that I'll put in the, in the description. It's some interesting reading and uh, somewhat scary at parts. Anyway, I hope you all have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon.